All right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk more about quadratics. This is Mr. Sullivan. Today we're going to talk about them in standard form. Look right here, we have this motor, uh, motorbike guy going up here. We have a parabola. In fact, we have two parabolas, don't we? We have the bike's parabola, and we have then also his parabola where he falls off. But it's just something else for you to understand that this is a naturally occurring phenomenon, all right? It's not like this guy said, oh, I want to fall in this U-shape. That's how the physics of this all works. So let's take a look here. We have the function 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. We know it's a quadratic because it has a squared term. That's how we know. And this is in standard form, and we've talked about standard form. Standard form again, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is the number in front of x squared, b is the number in front of x, and c is the constant at the end. All right, couple of things now. So let's talk about the axis of symmetry. Now I under totally understand that we have this graph right here. And this is pretty easy to see right now that the axis of symmetry right here is x equals positive one. But we need to come up with this, all right? We need to be able to graph these. And remember, once we have our vertex, we should be able to graph it. Now again, we know our vertex. What is our vertex? Over one, down one. So our vertex is positive one, negative one. All right, in black, I'm gonna get uh, everything I can just get from the graph. All right, our y-intercept, we know our y-intercept is positive one. We know that because when x is zero, it's one. We also can find that from our information here, right? Zero squared times two minus zero, so that would cancel out and we get a one. All right, we'll get to this x-intercepts in a second. So this is all information that we got from our graph, but it's kind of cheating, okay? It's kind of cheating. Remember, we're looking for a vertex. Once we find a vertex, we can graph because we have our one, three, five rule. In this case, we're gonna multiply it by two, so we're gonna do our two, six, 10 rule. Over one, up two, over one, up six, over one, up 10, right? But what happens if we don't know the vertex? What happens if I don't have the graph? I was just given my equation. How would I be able to find this information? Well, there's a couple things we need to know first. So the very first thing we need to know is this formula. So the axis of symmetry, the formula to find the axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. So let's take a look at what that means. Negative b over 2a, what does that mean? So remember, it's a, ax squared minus bx or plus bx plus one. So in this case, a is two and b is negative four. So we're gonna find our axis of symmetry. x equals negative b, in this case it's four, over two times a. Now a lot of people freak out about this negative sign. What do I do? I often think of this as saying the, this. I want to do the opposite of b and divide it by 2a. So the opposite of a negative 4 is a positive 4 uh, over 2l. Oh, our a is 2 as well. 2 times 2 is 4. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Hey, look at that. We found that. Nice job. All right. So our vertex. We already know that the vertex is going to, the x coordinate is going to be the same as our value, right? Our x value, our axis of symmetry. How do we find our y value? Well, if I know an x, what do I do? I'm going to plug that x in to find my y. All right, so I'm going to plug that value in. So I'm going to plug negative b over 2a into my function. All right, check it out. So, let's come back over here. I'm gonna plug the value of one into my function. So my y coordinate is gonna be two times x, which is one squared, minus four times one plus one. So that's one squared is one, four times one is four, then we have two minus four plus one, which is two minus four is negative two, plus one is negative one. And there you have it. We got our y, our x and our y, all the same way. All right, let's take a look at this. This is a new topic. 
the x-intercept. We've been talking a lot about the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is 0. So the x-intercept is going to be when y is 0. All right, y-intercept, y x0, x-intercept, y. So right now we're talking about this line right here. This is when y is 0. So right here is one x-intercept, and right here is our second x-intercept. Now you'll notice we have two intercepts, no problem. And we're going to approximate these. We're going to learn next time how to find these exactly. All right, or excuse me, not exactly, but another approximate way. But today we're just going to approximate using the graph. This looks like it's closer. It's about halfway, but it's a little bit closer, so I'm going to call that 0.4. So I'm going to call it 0.4 comma 0. Now, if you thought of that as 0.3, okay, don't worry about it, all right? Likewise, I'm going to say, now remember, there's some symmetry. So if I think this is about 0.4 from this, it's got to be about 0.4 from that. So I'm going to say that is going to be 1.6 comma 0. All right, those are my estimations for our x-intercept. Just want you to get the understanding of that. Now, I want you also to take a look at something. Uh, other possibilities. Let's say I had this graph right here. And it touches, and the vertex is right there. How many x-intercepts would I have then? I would only have one x-intercept, right? I could have two x-intercepts. I could have one. I could also have zero. This one doesn't touch the x-intercept at all. All right? Just something different with quadratics. All right, let's try and graph these. Remember, if once we find our vertex, the rest should come through nice and easy. So our axis of symmetry is negative b or the opposite of b over 2a. Here we go. So a here is negative 1, b here is negative 6. So the opposite of b, the opposite of negative 6 is 6 divided by 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. That means our x axis of symmetry is going to be negative 3. All right, let's find our y value. So we're going to have to plug that in. So y equals negative. I like using parentheses here, and I'm going to talk about y in a second. Negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3 minus 4. Now, some of you are really good with those TI-84s. You can put that in just like you see it, and you'll get your answer. If you want to do it by hand, that's not a problem either, though, okay? You just have to remember your order of operations. I'm not doing a negative times a negative. I'm doing a negative 3 squared. And a lot of you put negative 3 squared in your calculator like that, and it gives you the wrong answer. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. So this is negative 3 squared or positive 9. Since it's positive 9 and negative times positive 9 is now negative 9, negative 6 times negative 3 is a positive 18 minus 4. Negative 9 plus 18 is 9, minus 4 is 5. So our vertex is negative 3, positive 5. All right, let's see, what is our y-intercept? Our y-intercept, we also know, is negative 4, 0, negative 4. All right, so let's do some graphing. So x is negative 3, 1, 2, 3. This is our axis of symmetry right here. Remember, this line helps you graph everything because parabola, parabola excuse me, have that symmetry. So 0, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. Nice. All right. Hey, our a is negative 1, so we have our 1, 3, 5 rule, and i got to multiply it by negative 1, so I'm going to go negative 1, negative 3, and negative 5. Starting at negative 3, positive 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I start here, so I'm going to go over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 3, 1, 2, 3. Over 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, we got that point. Great. So now I'm going to do my symmetry, so 3 this way, 2 this way, and 1 this way. All right, <clears throat> now because we want these x-intercepts, excuse me, we want to make sure we draw this as best we can. And I know you're saying to yourself, Sullivan, you are terrible at drawing these. And you're right, absolutely right. So I'm going to try and make sure that I do as best I can right there. All right, see, this one is almost hitting negative 1, so I'm going to call that negative 9. So negative 0 0.9, pardon me, and 0. Remember, the x-intercepts are when y equals 0. And our other one, we have 2 this time, so I'm going to call that 
one, two, three, four, five, and a little bit more. So negative 5.1 comma zero. Now I want to talk to you about something. See how I said this was about 0.1 over? That means this one's about 0.1 over because that's symmetry. So if this is 0.1 less, this is going to be 0.1 more. That's how I got those, all right? Again, these are approximates. If you had negative 6, you probably did something wrong with your graph, right? But if you had something close to these, it's going to be okay. Let's try the next one. All right. So our A in this case is 0.5. Ooh, decimals. Our B is negative 5. So our vertex, our axis of symmetry, let's find that first. That's negative, or the opposite of negative 5 is 5. And then we have 2 times 0.5. Well, 2 times a half is 1, so 5 over 1 is 5. Let's plug that in. Y equals uh, 0.5 times 5 squared minus 5 times 5 plus 10. 5 squared is 25, half of 25 is 12.5, 5 times 5 is 25. 12.5 minus 25 is negative 12.5, plus 10 is negative 2.5. So our coordinate is 5, comma, negative 2.5. All right, what's our y-intercept? Our y-intercept, we know again, is 10. Great, so that means we have 0, 10. All right, we'll find our x-intercepts in a second. Let's plot these. Uh, let's look at our 1, 3, 5 rule. 1, 3, 5, and I'm multiplying by a half, right? So this is going to be 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves. All right, here we go. So I'm going over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is my axis of symmetry. Very nice. All right, five, negative two and a half. Five over, down one, two and a half. Okay, so remember, I'm going to go over one, up a half. Over one, up one half. That's one half. I'm going to go over two, over one, up three halves. It's over one, up one half, two half, three halves. Over one, up one, two, three, four, five halves. Give me some symmetry going on here. All right, and we can draw this as nice and as neat as possible. All right. All right, and this one, in fact, we know is going to make it a 10, right? So a little bit like that. Oh, that was terrible. All right. So let's find our x-intercepts. Remember, our x-intercepts is when y is 0, and that is this x-axis. So this looks like it's 2.5. So 2.5 comma 0, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and a half. 7.5 comma 0. All right. Why don't you pause the video and try this one on your own? All right. So in this one, A is 2, B is negative 8. We found our vertex, the opposite of negative 8, over 2 times A, got us 2. Plug that in, found that our vertex is at 2, comma 1, right here. We have our axis of symmetry at 2. We have our y-intercept at 9. Remember, x is 0, so these cancel out, so y is 9. Put that down. All right, now, something really interesting about this one is there's no x-intercepts. It doesn't touch the x-axis at all. Therefore, there's going to be no x-intercepts. All right. Last thing, now, without graphing these, let's see if they're going to be a, ma a maximum or minimum and then find the y value, the y-intercept. All right, the first thing, the y-intercept is pretty easy, right? Y-intercept is when x is 0. So that's gone, that's gone, so negative 8. So the y-intercept for this one is 0, negative 8. All right, next thing, let's talk about the a value is negative, therefore it's going to go down, right? So we know our answer is going to be a maximum at some point. All right, let's find out what that point is. We know that's the vertex. That's going to be the vertex. So let's find our axis of symmetry. The opposite of B over 2A. The opposite of negative 12 over 2A. Negative 3. So that's going to be negative 12 over negative 6, which is 2. So our x-coordinate is 2. 
plug that in. So we need to find f of 2. And when we found that, we would have got what? 2 squared is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 plus 24 minus 8. Negative 12 plus 24 is neg uh, excuse me, positive 12 minus 8, which is 4. So our vertex is 2, 4. So there's going to be a maximum at 2, comma 4, and the y-intercept is 0, negative 8. All right, down here, let's try this one. So we know right off the bat um, our y-intercept, ooh, look at this, no middle term, is going to be 0, negative 25. All right, this is positive, so it opens up. So I'm going to have a minimum value this time. So I'm just going to write that in, minimum at, and we'll figure out what that is. All right, so let's see here. Our axis of symmetry, the opposite of B over 2A. There is no B. What number represents nothing? Zero. The opposite of that is zero. Two times four, it doesn't really matter. Zero divided by eight is zero. So our x value is zero. We plug that in, f of zero. Four times zero squared minus 25. That's all zero. So it's going to be negative 25. Now check this out. This is one of those rare times. The minimum and the y-intercept are exactly the same. Most of the times they're not the same, are they? It's a good point to understand because lots of times kids get mix, mixed up. What is the y-intercept? Is it the, the vertex? It's not. They're different things. All right. Great job. Good luck on the rest of this unit. All right. And don't forget, go out in that world and be the change.